What's up YouTube? I'm Corzy from Gaming Legit bringing you Battlefield Bad Company 2. This is part 3 of the Rush game on Valparaiso. Um, I think this game, this part of this game gets a little bit more intense, a lot more kills, and so it makes the video funner to watch. And I want to take this first 30 seconds or whatever, and I won't go past that, I swear, to thank my subscribers and people for um, just giving substance with their comments and just giving good sources of information for the other subscribers and people that enjoy gaming legit. So thank you so much for being such an awesome subscriber. I love you guys and I hope to continue to make videos that you guys want to watch. Um, the, the strat I want to talk about today, first of all, um, just going straight with what you're seeing on the screen is defending MCOM stations appropriately. Um, of course, it completely depends on the situation you're in, um, but the one I'm in right now, there's no walls to the MCOM station. Um, I'm waiting for it to be armed actually right now. I found a pretty much a good little niche and area to be able to slay a bunch of people and to protect my team as they're trying to arm the demolition point or MCOM station. You can see right there I get the 5,000. I think it was the um, gold star pin for the um, the uh, G36. I'm not 100% sure if that was a gold star pin, but the MCOM station now is armed, and so I'm going to continue to sit here. 50% um, of my body is covered by the dock, but I, I mean, I've killed so many people at this point that you know they're going to be fighting to get me now. Um, but I do get revived right here, which is awesome. I love being revived at appropriate times. I hate being revived at bad times where they, you know, you're not safe and basically they revive you to die again just so you can stay out of the game a little bit longer. I think that's why they do it purposely. Um, anyways, that's a, a pretty good example of defending an MCOM station um, without being directly next to the MCOM station or staring at the MCOM station. You know, as long as you're at, you know, the general vicinity of the area and uh, paying attention to the flow of the defense as they're trying to make their general way over to the MCOM station you're you're doing you're doing a defensive role um, you don't have to be standing right on the MCOM station to be playing a, uh, a defensive role so now of course it is the uh, last two points um, actually is this the last point no the last two points of Valparaiso of which I think are the very very hardest of um, any of the points to get in the rush game variant in bad company 2 um, these ones if you're playing a good team it's just freaking almost impossible um, I, I think I'm gonna be showing you guys a video uh, the next video it's gonna be showing you how to use smoke um, and it's it's kind of a short clip or whatever so I'm gonna combine it with some other stuff but really what you should be doing at this point of Valparaiso is be using the smoke perk for the assault class, um, instead of using the 40 millimeter grenades, you use the smoke and just to cover your tracks while you're making your way. Because pretty much the enemy team posts up on these mountains, they're not really doing it. Failed knife attempt right there by that um, uh, recon, and uh, I end up getting an easy hip shot kill on him. But normally this is very very hard base to get into. Um, but these guys obviously just you know were taken a little bit to spawn. Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly what was going on, but it was a lot easier to get up to this point in the map than it normally is. Um, and I think I'm going to be doing a revive um, pretty soon. You haven't really seen me throw too many med packs, and of course, as I say, I throw down a med pack. And I want to talk about it because it was brought up in some of my comments, and it's totally worthy. Um, it was constructive criticism, and you know, I don't think I am just like balls to the wall, the best player in the world. And I do listen to you guys, and so I'm going to take this time to say I probably should have been throwing a lot more health packs down. Um, and I'm going to be talking about how you guys should be doing that. Um, and a lot of you guys like sometimes will think that you know because of where you are or what's going on in the map throwing down a random health pack doesn't really do anything it's kind of pointless but I'm gonna kind of provide a counter argument to that um, and probably hopefully get some of you guys to start throwing down more health packs and don't play noobishly like I did in this one as I throw down another one so the reasoning behind it in the health pack scenario I want to talk about is this and so for example if I'm rushing to this next MCOM station 
There's no teammates around me. I'm not really focused on or looking at anybody's health specifically. But at the same time, I realize that they're going to be running down the same road to be able to make their progress to the next MCOM stations. Why not toss out a med pack? You don't know all, out of all the squad mates and people that are on your team who has health, who doesn't have health. You really can't monitor that. Like, And if you are monitoring like everybody's health, then you're not paying attention to everything else that's going on in the game. Um, enough said on that. So if you throw down a health pack, you don't know who's going to be running up on it, and you might get miscellaneous like you know squad heal points. So it helps out you, it helps out your team. Um, also, if you throw down a med pack like right now, if I threw it down like right now, so maybe I have teammates progressing that want to get healed, they'll get healed. But at the same time, when I get up closer to other teammates, my health pack will be replenished, and I'll be able to throw down another one. So why not just start throwing? them down it's just another thing to kind of add to your game that I hope uh, gets you more points and it helps out your team and now the second thing I want to talk about is reviving and there's there's you know all, all these back and forth arguments on reviving when to revive if you should revive now we've already talked about how you shouldn't revive somebody unless you know the person that killed that teammate um, is dead or you're safe to be able to revive them because it happens way too much where you die and the teammate just sees the lightning bolt and instantly pulls out his defibs and sprints over to you and revives you without um, really paying attention to what's going on around him and it ends up getting both of you guys killed and you lose your tickets and it just keeps you out of the game longer and it's super frustrating for you of course uh, so kind of briefly going to be talking about reviving people um, in a situation coming up pretty soon by the way, I don't know how this is possible, but I was able to whip all the way around on the quad. I don't know if this was a glitch, but normally when I'm in the back of the quad, I can't see what's going on. Right here, I should have gotten the dog tags, because if you get like 100 kills or 200 kills of the dog tags, you get like a 5,000 point medal. And it helps you rank up, because good grief, it takes forever to rank up in this game. I just got to like level 32, and I've been playing 50s and like shit balls. That is ridiculous, like these kids that are 50s, because... Um, what it's going to take for me to rank up to 34 is 150,000 points. And if you're not getting the 5 grand um, XP points from like gold star medals and like the miscellaneous medals that you can get, get you're going to be getting like in a good game 2,000 points, like average. That's, that's a pretty decent game. And so, I mean, it, you don't have to be a mathematician to see that it's going to take freaking long time to rank up in this game it's ridiculous all right that was the situation right there I wanted to talk about and that was where I chose to revive that guy um, and I'm gonna kinda supply a counter argument to that and and I, I don't want you guys to get pissed and to um, uh, instantly go and no that was a smart decision that was the unselfish thing to do but what I want to launch at you guys is what about conviction? Um, trusting your own personal skill and holding yourself higher than other people. Basically, the argument I'm trying to make is by reviving that guy, I'm putting myself in a position to be killed. And the spot that I was at on our uh, defending that MCOM station, obviously I was doing a lot of good. I killed like three or four guys as they're trying to get to that MCOM station, and they just didn't seem to be able to disarm it. And by moving away from that, I'm giving up that opportunity to be able to defend that MCOM station to unselfishly revive that teammate but it ended up getting me killed um, he luckily didn't die but by me getting killed I'm making it so that income station possibly could have been disarmed and so I'm just saying you have to pick and choose when to revive people people are gonna be pissed at you and get on you sometimes being like you're a selfish prick for not reviving people but you gotta look for the better outcome and that like the in the end uh, what's gonna happen like if you choose to be unselfish quote quote and revive your partner are you gonna die and then cause the MCOM station to be disarmed just so you can be credited for being a team player quote quote you gotta make these decisions I know they can get kinda confusing and you'll get people bitch at you and tell you you need to revive more people and I know I don't pay enough attention to uh, the people I need to be reviving but at the same time I'm more focused on the MCOM stations than I am who I need to revive I'm Corsi from Gaming Legit. I hope you liked this video. Please subscribe if you haven't. Spread the word. God bless. Love you. Peace.